Good day, my viewers. My name is Korusi, the director of Newton Science Tutorial here in Bin City. In this short video, I'll be talking about chemistry and the introduction to chemistry. So to begin with, what is chemistry? Okay, what is chemistry? Now, chemistry is the branch of pure science that study matter. Chemistry is the branch of pure science that study matter. So I can say chemistry is the branch of pure science pure science that study matter now the next question you may ask me is that what is matter because it's a new word i'm seeing here what is matter matter is anything that has mass and can occupy space okay matter is anything that has mass and can occupy what space so chemistry is this is a branch of pure science that study what matter so chemistry is the study of everything because the whole universe is made up of what matter like my professor said what else is not chemistry so chemistry is the study of everything okay now because science is an organized body of knowledge you want to ask me what is it we study about matter what is it we study about matter as a chemist what do i study about matter as a chemist now number one we study what we call composition composition if you don't call it composition you can call it constituents 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 okay what is constituent the makeup the makeup matter is made up of something what are those things that matter is made up okay for example water is matter water is matter and in chemistry water has a formula and what is the formula the formula of water is h2o so they might ask us what is the composition of water the h represents hydrogen why the O represents oxygen? So water is made up of two elements. One is hydrogen, the other one is what? Oxygen. So the first thing we do in matter, we study the composition, the composition of matter. Another example again is air. Air is a mixture of gases. Okay? Air. Air is a mixture of gases. Now, what are the gases that are present in air? What are the constituents of air? What are the composition of air? One is nitrogen. Air consists of nitrogen. Number two, oxygen. Number three, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. Number four, you have water vapor. Water vapor and some noble gases. Okay? These are the constituents of air. These are the constituents of air. So, chemistry study the composition of matter. Number two things is study uses. 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 That has to do with the application, the function. Okay? The uses of matter. For example, now, in chemistry, we produce fertilizer. It is used in our farm to what? To increase productivity. Okay, so as a chemist, we study the uses of matter. Number three, properties. 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 Properties has to do with behavior. How does matter behave? How does matter behave? So, in studying properties, we study the behavior of matter. And these properties could either be physical properties or chemical properties the properties we study in chemistry is physical and chemical property physical property has to do with number one the boiling point 
the boiling point of the, of the matter. The boiling point. Number two, the melting point. The melting point. Number three, the color. The color. The color. Number four, the odor. Okay? The odor. Number five, the solubility. Is that particular matter soluble in water or not? So, we talk about solubility. Solubility. We talk about the density. The density of matter. All this has to do with the physical world property of matter. Why the chemical property of matter has to do with the chemical reactions. The reactions of matter with another. Okay? So, we study physical, study what? Chemical. Okay? Now, number four is structure. 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 So, we want to know the shape. The shape, the angle, or the, the, the size of what? Of matter. The angle, the shape, the structure. Because the structure affects the chemical and physical property of what? Of matter. So, if I want to put all these things together to define chemistry, I will say chemistry is the branch of pure science that study one composition, uses, properties, and structure of matter. In a simpler way, with my mnemonics, I can say chemistry is the study of corpse. Chemistry is the study of corpse of matter. My C represents composition. My U represents uses. My P represents properties. And my X represents structure. So when you remember these four letters combined to form curves, you cannot easily define chemistry because chemistry deals with these four letters. The first letter there is C and is the composition of matter. The second one is U, the uses. The third one is P, the properties. And I said properties could be either be physical or what? Chemical. The last one is what? Is the structure of what? Of matter. Now, as we all know, matter undergoes changes. We all know. So, let's talk about changes in matter. So, changes in matter. Please, let me go to the side. Changes in matter. Let's talk about the changes in matter. What happened? What happened? Because matter undergoes changes. So, changes in matter. Now, there are two basic changes we can see in matter. Two basic. One is physical change. So, the changes matter can undergo is either physical change or chemical change. It's either physical change or chemical change. Now, listen attentively now. Because once you know this one, automatically you know this. There is no way you will know this and not know this. Because this one, physical change, is a direct opposite of chemical change. Now, what are the things you need to know about physical change? There are three basic things I want you to know about physical change. Number one is that a physical change is reversible. It is reversible. A physical change is reversible. That means it can go forward and backward. A physical change can go forward and backward. For example, for example, the melting of ice to water. The melting of ice. The melting of ice to water. The melting of ice to water. Now, what we make ice to melt, if you increase the temperature, ice will melt to water. And that process is called melting. It's called melting. This process can also be reversible if I decrease the temperature. That is, if I put this water in a deep freezer and the temperature drops down, this water will change back to ice. So we can see that this reaction is reversible. And this is a typical example of physical change from ice to water and from water back to ice. And the process from water to ice is called freezing. It's called what? Freezing. So, one thing you need to know about a physical change is that number one, a physical change is reversible. A physical change is what? Reversible. Number two, 
things you need to know about the physical chains is that the mass remain constant. Mass remain constant before and after the change. Before and after the change. The mass remain constant before and after the change. The example I just gave now with ice and water. For example, if I take five grams of ice, five grams of ice, and it melts to water, the water will still weigh five grams. It has changed from ice to water, but the water will still weigh what? Five grams. So the change before and after, the mass remain constant. Irrespective of the change, the mass of the substance remain what? Constant. That is the second thing you need to know about a physical change. The mass is always what? Constant. Number three things you need to know about physical change is that no new substance is formed. No new substance. No new substance is formed. No new substance is formed. That is, ice and water is the same thing. Just that they exist in different forms. Okay? No new substance is what? Is formed. So, these basic three things you need to know about physical change. Okay? And all these three things are the direct opposite of chemical change. So, you cannot guess now and your guess will be right. So, number one, what is a chemical change? Number one, it is not reversible. It is not reversible. It is not reversible. Okay? It is not reversible. Okay? You see? A chemical change is not reversible number two number two is that the mass mass does not remain constant 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 number three is that new substance is formed New substance is formed. New substance is new substance is formed. So, three things you need to know about chemical change is that it is not reversible. Number two, the mass does not remain constant. That means there is changes in mass. As you change from one point to another, the mass will change. Number three, the new substance is formed. Now, let me show you a typical example of physical change. A typical example. The typical example here is this. Example of physical change is the melting of ice. Number one, A, melting of ice to water. Two, freezing, freezing of ice cream. Freezing of ice cream is an example of physical change. Three, switch C, dissolution, dissolution of salt in water. The solution of salt in water is an example of what? A physical change. Number four or B. Number four is magnetization of ion. Magnetization of ion. Magnetization, which is D. D. Magnetization. Magnetization of ion is an example of what a physical what change magnetization of ion is an example of what a physical change number five or six condensation 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 of water vapor or condensation of vapor to water and this you are going from the gaseous state to the liquid state okay that is condensation is all these are examples of what? Physical change. Because all these processes I just illustrated, they are reversible. All the processes are what? They are reversible. Now, example of chemical change. Example of chemical change. We said it is not reversible. Okay? Think about that. So, number one example of chemical change is the burning of wood. Okay? Burning of wood into ashes. You cannot recover it back. You cannot re reverse this process. You cannot turn ashes to wood. It's impossible. Even though if you are a prophet, I think it will be very difficult to do that. Okay? Now, burning of wood 
into what? Ashes is an example of chemical change. Why? Because this process is not reversible. There is no way you can turn your ashes back to wood. Number two is decay. Decay of substance. Decay of substance. Decay of substance. Okay? When a substance undergo a decay, that process is not what? Reversible. In chemistry wise. In chemistry wise. When a substance undergo decay, that process is not what? Is not reversible. Okay? Number three is the addition. Addition of quick line. What is quick line? Quick line is calcium high calcium oxide. So addition of calcium oxide, which is known as quick line to water. To water. Addition of calcium oxide. Calcium oxide has a common name, and the name is quick line. To what? Water. And that process is called slaking. That process is called slaking. It's called slaking because it will, you, 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 you will get slake line in the process. So that is an example of a chemical change because it is not reversible. Number four example is neutralization. Neutralization reaction. The reaction between an acid and a base to form salt and water. That reaction is not reversible. The reaction between an acid with a base to form salt and water, that reaction is not reversible. So it's an example of chemical change. Number five is the rusting of iron. The rusting of iron, okay? The rusting of iron, okay? When your iron rusts, okay, that go rusting, you cannot get it back. That process is what is not what reversible okay so these are the changes that takes place in matter the changes can either be physical or chemical and mind you in chemistry matter exists in three states basically in chemistry matter exists in three states under normal condition matter exists so let's talk about the state of matter state of matter matter exists in three states majorly. Number one, it exists as a solid. Number two, it exists as a liquid. Number three, it exists as a what? As a gas. So matter exists basically under normal condition. But when we go beyond that, there are other states which I will mention in my next video. But basically, in from this our topic, matter exists in what? In this what three states. So let's look at the first state. The first state, the solid state, the liquid and the gas so let's see let me just have a kind of diagram here i have this one i have these two i have these three the first one you can see this is my solid this is my solid this is my solid this is my solid then this one you can see it looks like this okay then this So this is solid, this is liquid, and this is what? Gas. Basically, these are the three states of matter. And you can see the fundamental difference between these three states of matter is the degree of movement. Is the degree of movement of the particles. Here, yeah, the, the, the movement the particle experience here is vibrational. Vibrational. Okay, the movement here is translatory. Translatory. And here it's random. It's random. It's random. The solid has a fist shape. Okay, the solid has a fist shape. The liquid takes the shape of what? Of its container. If you put a liquid in a cup, it will take the shape of a cup. If you put a liquid in a bottle, it will take the shape of what? Of a bottle. Okay, and here, the gas also expands. If you put a gas in a drum, it will expand to the what? Volume of the drum. If you put a gas in a bottle, it will fill the whole bottle. So, gas expands here. Okay, so basically, I, I want to stop here. I will stop here because in my next video, I will talk more about these three states of matter in my next video. So, but for now, 
I want you to hit the subscribe button so that anytime I upload a video, it will alert. You get the alert in your phone. Until I come your way next time, I remain Kurusi, the director, Newton Science Tutorial University. Thank you.